it's something a lot of two-handed players just don't no, have. Like, no. if they don't cultivate a slice, they just don't have that touch and feel element. And so around the net in general, they tend to be cavemen and just, like, club everything <laughs> instead of having some feel. I'm yeah. looking at you, Andy Roddick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most of them are not at the 4-5 level, so they're looking at you right. like, oh, this guy's really good when, in fact, you know, I'm kind of a burnout from college and I'm only starting to love <laughs> tennis again. But they, they, they're viewing you at a pedestal yeah. which i don't know if that's right or not but that's what it seems like it yeah. is half the time see i have a one-hander but when you slice them all they don't they, 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 they don't put yeah. you you sit at the bottom like, of the pedestal yeah. it's like oh my goodness you have a one-handed backhand and even though i'm like you know four five five oh i'm definitely not pro but being you're able automatically to automatically legit yeah, yeah i know yes people are looking at you're like oh my goodness he's a greek <laughs> god on a tennis court like it's like well you are anyway mark <laughs> But it's one of those things where I you're think at the lake front courts with your shirt off. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I know what's going on. <laughs> Flexing. Yeah. Hey, where's the bathroom? Literally, yeah. right yeah. over there. <laughs>
one-handed backhand from the baseline compared to a two-hander. You know, that's obviously why, you know, when you're teaching even quick start or juniors, you default to a two-handed backhand. And then once they start developing muscle, once they start growing, yep. getting that part of their life, if they want to switch to a one-handed backhand, okay, we'll try some things out, but it's still going to be a very very rough journey yeah so even though i am you don't know, scare people too much i know but <laughs> my, my favorite shot in my arsenal in my tennis game right now is my one-handed backhand but i will always teach a two-hander unless the person that i'm coaching specifically says teach me a one-hander i will always default to a two-hander coaching wise i want to play devil's advocate a little bit uh for something you said mark you you mentioned uh, i don't remember the exact phrase but you were talking about kind of technical you didn't say simplicity but um mechanics yeah mechanics like uh, but what is you, not sim- more simple but more uh less moving parts or something like that what, what was the, the two-handed phrase? backhand is more simple yeah a lot more less simple. moving parts yeah i don't I, th- I would almost kind of push back against that a little bit in the sense that one of the most common questions i've had about the backhand over the years has been like which hand does more work like this mm-hmm. coach says like it's like a left-handed forehand this this coach says it's not like use each hand like e- equally or evenly or whatever and i think there's a lot of like Amateur players a lot of times have a lot of confusion about mm-hmm. like what to do with the left hand and the right hand. So I th- I think sometimes the one hander can be kind of freeing in the sense that there's a singular you know focus and it's not both hands uh, connected to the racket. Mm-hmm. But broadly speaking, I definitely agree. Like if I'm gonna pick one or the other, I'm gonna default to the two hander because it's just especially for a beginner. Yeah. yeah. It just tends to be easier. But if I'm dealing with somebody who's like an adult beginner, who's a good athlete and well coordinated, I'm gonna have them hit both for a little while, for a little while, and see which one is kind of more natural to them. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and see which one they gravitate towards. Well, even then, like you mentioned, uh, Stan Babrinka and uh, Richard Gasquet, you know, two of, of one of the, some of the best one-handed backhands on the men's tour. But if you really break it down, they actually have different mechanics. Where Gasquet is a little bit more fluid, right? And Babrinka just like power through Crushes, it like a yeah. monster like it's not an elegant looking shot compared to a dimitrov or a gasquet or you know some of the more traditional one-handed backhands where they're a little bit more flexible and can rip over the top of it but we could just plow through it it's nuts yeah and and i think on the on the coaching side of things which what's interesting is and you know we've seen it so much major i don't want to say majority of amateur players because that's not fair but one of the most common mistakes i'll say is players don't use they're big muscles. Mm -hmm. They don't coil, they don't uncoil. Everything is an arm. So you've seen people get away with ugly two-handed backhands (laughs) and be able to be somewhat successful, like getting getting the ball, (laughs) even on the amateur side. It's really painful to watch somebody with a one-handed backhand. (laughs) I mean, every time I see it, it's like, how do you not schedule your elbow it's painful. surgery? It's painful <laughs> for me too. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I think, but like what you're saying, I mean, we just had a student, you know, Justin, and he, one of the things he wanted to work on was one handed backhand. And again, super athlete, right? Yeah. But I mean, to and watch him, guy. yeah. And to watch him freely just hit the ball was. It looks effortless it, it, when it's done well. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if you can get a student to get in that mindset of like, yeah. hey, I'm not going to use my arm, I'm going to use the big muscles, mm-hmm. I think that's easier um, to kind of break down. And there's some great benefits to that too, because like you said, I actually think it was, it was funny. I was hitting with a friend in, in Chicago before that last thing, cause I hadn't hit tennis balls in a while. And I, my backhand was just terrible. And he hit me one and I, out of frustration, I hit a one hander and I smoked that thing. And he's like, maybe you should switch. And I was just angry, but it was all my body was doing the work. Where, like yeah. you said, my hands were, were fighting and my body wasn't turning. Yeah. Too much going on, but um, yeah. So going back to the the t- you know the topic at hand, pros and cons. I, I would say that's definitely a con for the the one handed backhand. And by the way, do you think your audience or when you chose the topic, Mark, do you, were you having more in mind um, having the perspective of amateur athletes or more so high level? you know, kind of a leader and or professional Probably not professional because those guys are, let's say, not human. Let's yeah. talk about like, you know, amateur okay. to maybe club to, okay. you know, right. yeah. somewhat so competitive levels. Yeah. So, so looking through that lens, 
I think a big con of the one-handed backhand. Like if you're going to be bad at one or the other, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like if you're going to have a bad one-hander or a bad two-hander, you definitely would rather have a bad two-hander. Correct. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because at least I, it's kind of what you're, you're saying, mm-hmm. I think. Like you can at least make up for it with the other like hand. You can kind of get some shovely, like scoopy kind of stuff going. But once you're behind on the one-hander, like once you've like mistimed it or – and or not coiled the body, like not use the big parts of the body, it just feels freaking awful. (laughs) (laughs) So I feel like that's the biggest draw for me, the biggest drawback, is if you're not going to do it really well, then then the two handers just a lot e- a lot yeah. easier to do poorly. <laughs> well, now that I think about it, I I know there are, uh, there are some people out there around um, like my state league team around the club and amateur level that went from a two handed to a one hander. I've never actually heard now that I think about it mm. of the opposite yeah. way where someone had a one hander and they said screw it, I'm going to go with a two hander. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. Can yeah, you guys? no, I honestly not, no. not really. I mean, I think it. There, I feel like you, once you jump off that cliff, there's no, <laughs> yeah, there's I mean, not really a whole lot. It's like going. seeing the light. Yeah. It's phenomenal. It, it's and, and like you said, it's 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 interesting. One small tweak, right, of adding another hand onto the racket is just it changes everything. Yeah, it, it, in the mechanics of it, 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 it yeah, you're the timing, 100% right. the contact point. Hundred, yeah, I've never, I'm in all my years coaching, I've t- took somebody from a two hander to a one. I've never taken anybody from a one to a two. Uh, going, let, let's stick on the cons for a little while. Uh, sure. I just mentioned uh, timing. Even if you have reasonably good mechanics, and even if you're a reasonably good athlete, finding and this is kind of what this is like basically the core of my project at the moment with yep. my one hander. Um, I've I a thousand percent understand what I need to do, but my old habit my contact point was so late and so far back that rewiring that timing mechanism is it's been very very difficult for me and if you don't hit the pocket Mm -hmm. you know just i I know you know what i'm talking about Uh, in particular if you're an eighth of a second too late you're just like struggling it's like you're flailing in the deep end of a pool trying to get the ball back well part of that is going to the pros but sticking with the cons that contact point needs to be within that small small window where compared to a two-handed backhand yeah you could hit a little bit late you a could, little you more know, wiggle room yeah exactly just because you have theoretically bigger muscles to kind of back you up and to just kind of block it slash bunt mm-hmm. it back whether or not it looks pretty or not now with the one-handed backhand if you're like a split second too late that thing is going two courts to the right or two courts <laughs> to the left and that's really frustrating in outdoor tennis specifically yeah. because you could hit a rock. You could hit a leaf. The wind can go, come up just last second, and you're hitting it super late, and you're like, I don't know what to do. Well, with a two-hander, you can kind of muscle it. You can, like, Medvedev it. Like, yeah. <laughs> over, no offense to Medvedev. Yeah. yeah. So, let me ask you guys this, because I never had a two-hander. So I was thinking about this. Is You mean one-hander? Yeah, sorry. I've never had a two-hander either. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, but I always thought on the one-handed, so backhand, what about – uh, changing grips is that somewhat difficult mm. as well for I, I'm thinking more of the club like amateur yep. player because I look at so for me I have a pretty extreme grip on my uh, forehand I'm close to like a extreme semi okay I'm not full western but I can basically manipulate my left hand wherever it needs to be and if it's like served to me I can go really quick yep. what about like a return of serve like what grip do you guys start in do you guys start in a forehand grip do you guys start in your one-handed backhand grip I'm in the middle of figuring that out right now so I, because okay. part of my change in between uh, old crappy one-hander and new one-hander has been the grip. I, I basically was in a continental grip prior and, oh. I, and I have been in the pro- – this has been a part of the, yeah. the overhaul. And so, um, yeah, the, the shift from semi-western, which is what I use for my forehand, all the way up to an actual eastern one-handed backhand grip is a big shift. So honestly, I'm in the middle trying to. I, when you and I just played a bunch of mm-hmm. points, and I did all three, I waited in a forehand grip some points, I waited in a backhand some points, and I waited in continental some points. I'm in the process of trying to figure out like, do I have time to go continental and always switch somewhere? Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards right now, although I don't really like it. Mm-hmm. But going from uh, semi western to eastern backhand or eastern backhand all the way to semi western is just a big. It's, it's a big shift. What do you, What do you do? So. 
you're semi Western on the forehand. I thought you're Eastern. Yeah, I thought, I thought you were Eastern yeah, too. Eastern. <laughs> anyway, okay. I can pull up slow motion. <laughs> so yeah, well, never the motion. tape never lies. So yeah. I'm not going to argue with that. So one of the things when I switched from a two handed uh, to a one handed, the return was actually the hardest, as you said, Matt, because the timing of like, okay, we just got to get this back. I want to be in the right mm-hmm. grip, otherwise my wrist is probably going to break. But for me, and put that under the con. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> wrist broken. <Yeah. laughs> but it's one of those things too where. It's kind of like almost a hidden secret, especially with a one-handed backhand, where, assuming you're a righty, right? So, sorry, Ian. I'm used to it. Okay. Um, So, if you're returning, what I do is, my right hand is in my forehand grip, Mm -hmm. and then if I see the ball toss, just or the body of my opponent serving, just give away, saying, oh, okay, it's going to be towards my backhand return, it's actually not my right hand that switches. Mm -hmm. It's my left hand on the throat to change it. So, it's not the right hand that's moving at all. It's actually the left hand. Right. So... I don't know if that's uh, what you're, you've been doing with this new experimental thing that because you've know, got a lot of things going through your head when it comes to hitting a backhand, yeah. but that's something that was kind of like eye-opening to me because when I was returning with a two-hander, you know, it, it's a different it's a different grip. Yeah, now, one now in it's e- up here. One yeah. in each hand. Exactly. Yeah. I like that solution uh, tactically the best because I would yeah. I of course would rather hit a forehand, so mm-hmm. I, I like that solution better because uh, you probably noticed like I ended up blocking a lot mm-hmm. of forehands back yeah. because I was fidgeting and with it, like trying to figure out which one and it was funny because I thought you were just messing with me <laughs> like you were just <laughs> no. like oh I, I won the point on that so and I was like why does it need taking a swing no, at this that was this me like, trying to yeah. gotcha. experiment a little bit with the grip specifically but even if you are doing that type of uh, solution with using the offhand to actually switch the racket it still takes muscle memory and a lot right. of practice to be able to get that going and it's still a big it's, yeah it's still um, a big turn journey yeah <laughs> from the bottom all the way up to Correct. the to the top any more cons i want to move to the pros eventually but any other like drawbacks um, we talked about timing we talked about the grip change we talked about kind of the like if if you're <laughs> You, you, your mechanics have to be kind of a certain degree of yeah. of quality or else it just it's just really hard to muddle your way through it if your mechanics aren't decent oh my last one is you have to be strong both upper body and lower body to be able to hit it i mean obviously people can say oh federer is not built like nadal or joe wilford Sanga, but federer is a strong dude when you stand in front of federer you realize like yeah there's, yeah he's uh, he's, got, he's an athlete yeah. yeah i would say I, I don't i don't disagree with you but you can make up for it with quality of technique yes. correct like if you're not strong your mechanics just have to be that much that mm-hmm. much better right. And if there's any combination <laughs> of like jankiness yep. and weakness, then you're just you're just done. <laughs> well, that's why like you know obviously you don't need muscle to have a perfect one-handed backhand, but that's why when I teach these kids that haven't right. hit that part of their life yet, it's gonna be tough. Yeah. Because balls are gonna be way over your head. One-handed backhand coming over the top over your head is gonna be basically impossible. So until they you know start to fill out and you know have a little bit more muscle, they could kind of cushion the slight mishits or the slight mistimings they have on a one-handed backhand. Yeah. Yeah, I would say my last quick con, and this would be on more on the junior side, is more of it's if you took a kid in, and and they don't have to be a tournament player. They could be like a JV high school, whatever. But to give them, if they start at 10 years old, to give them muscle memory of a two-hander for three or four years, because they're or if they start younger because they're not developed yet. And then to try to change mindset, that that's that's pretty tough. Mm-hmm. I, and kids like absorb a lot, but I mean that's that's hard to do. Like if you look at kind of what you're talking about, your journey of your one-handed backhand, you're making drastic changes. So it might not be apples to apples, but at least you you're comfortable with the racket, you know, in your in your dominant hand the whole time. You, you have muscle memory on your slice and, and that stuff. It, you're basically training a, an entirely new shot. Um, so I, I, on the adult side, if they came in, you it's know, worse new, than, it's worse than new. It's, it's replacing old. Like that's right. The, I think that's yes. what you're getting. Yes. That's the 100%. hard part. Yes. Yeah. I almost kind of wish like I never played tennis. <laughs> right. right. Start <laughs> because fresh. I swear like playing right. Like Kevin and I, a lot of times would screw around and play like, uh, Opposite I would play righty. Hand. He would play lefty. And I swear my righty one handed back. And it's pretty good <laughs> because I had zero, ha- I had zero <laughs> neurological pathways like built over there. It's like, Oh, I just put it here and like come up and release the racket head. Like no big deal. And I'm, on my left hand side, I'm like, <laughs> 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 because of all the crap, just literally decades of just hitting it poorly. Yeah. But that's that's my my own problem. We don't need to talk about that. So, <laughs> any more cons, or are we going to pros? Uh, no, I think that I think we covered yeah. it pretty well. I think th- 
That's a pretty solid. Yeah, we bashed list. on it. A yeah, pretty yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like I apologize. Beat, yeah, beat, feel kind of bad. Yeah, let's let's say some some good some good things about the one hander. I mean, are we ever going to argue about the aesthetics of a one hander? No, no. That's, I mean, pretty, that's where I was going to start too. Yeah. yeah, even the most staunch like two hander two handed supporter, I don't think anybody can argue with yeah. the fact that when it's done well it, mm-hmm. and it's timed nicely. Can we can we like put our finger on it? Like what it what is it exactly? It's like a left-handed. It's like Ken Griffey Jr.'s baseball swing. It's a left-handed swing in baseball. Dude, I it, love that. It <laughs> is a reference. It, like it, watching a righty hit in baseball is so ugly when you see a lefty hit. It's so smooth. It looks effortless. But that is the same. Like I don't know aesthetically like who has the best two handers in the game if it's Djokovic and Nisha Corey um I, I'm not really sure on that based on stats or aesthetics for just the aesthetics. Really aesthetics but nobody looks better than the best aesthetic one-handed backhand it just looks so fluid so smooth um it, there, there's there's nothing that compares. Uh, Nal Bandian has a really smooth aesthetic for his two-handed backhand. Yeah, that's true. It was per- that and Safin. Safin was a little bit more brute force. Yeah. Where Nal Bandian, for some reason, and I can't believe I'm saying this in the same sentence, his two-handed backhand looks elegant as hell. Yeah. It's nice and smooth. Gets under it, and just a laser beam down the line. Oh, Marcus Bagdadis too. I don't know if that's a nice one. Bagdadis, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. not that big of a guy too. He's around five foot eight, five foot yeah, nine. No. Yeah. But timing perfectly. It's fantastic. No, it's that's actually an interesting question. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of other pr- like pretty uh, two handers, and I'm sure if I watch like some pro highlight reels, I'm sure I could come up with with some. But yeah, so many of them are just like kind of clubbing the yeah. the the ball, because that's the big strength of the two hander is strength of yep. you yeah. know, both hands being connected to the racket. I think a big part of the aesthetic is like there's something about the. I'm gonna get a little bit nerdy. The <laughs> like the the size of the circle, like how big of a circle the the tip of the mm-hmm. racket traces. Yep. Uh, and so there's something about that with the one hander where it's probably the most free and large motion in all of tennis. Maybe even more than the serve because the way the the arm extends out to contact and then when it's hit really nicely yeah. like the extension and then the the, 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 the re- shoulders are right exactly yeah there's just a, there's like a it's like a conductor <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's or a like a, a big bird <laughs> uh yeah i i think there's something about i think the flow comes from how wide and long of a, of a motion it is and when that's combined with like a powerful turn mm-hmm. of the body there's just it's like the the melding together of like strength and yep. smoothness is a really pretty thing. Well, one of the things that I kind of get comments from time to time when I'm hitting at my local indoor club or maybe even outside when the weather is nice is it's like, oh my goodness, you have a one handed backhand. And even though I'm like, you know, four, five, five, oh, I'm definitely not pro, but being you're able automatically to automatically legit. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> People are looking at you like, oh my goodness, he's a Greek <laughs> god on the <laughs> tennis court. Like, it's like, well, you are anyway, Mark. <laughs> but it's one of those things where I you're think at the lake front courts with your shirt off. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I know what's going <laughs> <Just> on. <laughs> flexing. Yeah. Hey, where's the bathroom? Literally, yeah. right yeah. over there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not that. It's definitely uncommon, especially compared mm-hmm. to a two-handed backhand at the amateur level. And it's uncommon to be done well. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then also, people like Federer have very much popularized it. Definitely. In my yeah. opinion. Yeah. I no, mean, definitely. Back then, like Sampras, he had an awful, yeah. awful looking obviously got the job done awful looking one-handed backhand but someone like Federer who is a little bit more modern someone like a Gasquet where they could just rip the ball right off their backhand wing down the line and drive it it's a piece of art an absolute piece of art yeah it's almost like a status uh it's a status swing yeah like if you can hit if you can hit it with topspin and hit it aggressively mm-hmm. then you're pretty much automatically at like a, another tier, like above where you actually play. Yeah. And the only thing from that could, outsiders, you know, who, yeah, exactly, who maybe don't necessarily know like what they're looking at. And people at the lakefront in these public courts or even indoor courts, you know, they're obviously not at the most of them are not at the four or five level. So they're looking at you, right? Like, oh, this guy's really good. When in fact, you know, I'm kind of a burnout from college and I'm only starting to love <laughs> tennis again. But they they they're viewing you at a pedestal, yeah. which I don't know if that's right or not, but that's what it seems like it yeah. is half the time. See, I have a one-hander, but when you slice them all, they don't, they, they, they don't put, <laughs> yeah. you, you sit They're at the bottom like, of the pedestal. <laughs> I don't have the Greek god status with, <laughs> the, with the slice. You're, you're oh, getting I'm, there, get, I'm getting there, you're getting yeah. There. A slow, like uh, 
at a time. A little at a time. Yeah, it's it's getting there. Uh, yeah, so that's so that's uh, aesthetic. Uh, other, I would other pros. Yeah, outside I would say of- the big pro is especially at the club level. You typically, I guess, if somebody has a a good two handed backhand, this is maybe not true. But going back to the the clubbers, we'll call them that just it's ugly, but they get away with it. Typically, that's only option they have. They mm-hmm. they can't slice the ball because they've never learned uh, how to yeah. um, get rid of their hands. Where one handed, even if it's not the greatest, they have those reps and yep. probably you know have at least that slice to fall back on, which is huge. And then yeah, I guess I could go down the rabbit. But hole. But that's kind of a con too. It, it could be, yeah. Because it, speaking it, from it, experience, yeah, they <laughs> won't go the. We'll only hit one of them. Um, it's but, a two-edged sword. Yeah, but again, then I guess going down the rabbit hole of the grip, if they're comfortable with a slice, then hopefully they're comfortable with a volley and a serve grip as well. That can all lead where a lot of players, I would say, again, at that recreation level, probably serve more of that eastern forehand. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're just not comfortable with that, and that's a hard as you guys know, that's an extremely hard grip to learn and teach and all that good stuff. Well, one of the one of the pros of a one-handed backhand, and this is speaking from personal experience and you know experiences as a coach watching some of my uh, kids with one-handed backhands kind of like grow up. If you have a one-handed backhand, you're going to have a good slice because you're going to be forced to rely on the slice anywhere between 25 to 50 percent of the time when you're on the baseline. I actually think I might be the tennis player within my circle that has a one-handed backhand that goes up on the backhand with topspin drive more so than slicing it because with a one-handed backhand how often do you see one-handed slice on a amateur level i mean you used to do it all the time and now you're starting to get yeah i think a good rough average is 50 50 yeah like you were saying but yeah, I was ninety nine one point yeah. <laughs> five. But because of that, you're forced, forced, and this could be a con too. But you're forced to have variety on your game, right? And it can be a pro and a con because the the slice can very quickly become a crutch, correct? Yes. Where it's like, oh, well, I, I know I can make this, and then the next point, you're like, oh, I know I can make the slice, and then eighty four thousand points later, <laughs> it's like, Still how do you hit top? Over, yeah. yeah, how do I do this again? <laughs> kind of like someone in sectionals two weeks ago in the USTA oh. tournament. Yeah, no, that that is a crutch, and I, I agree. Yeah. yeah, and that is absolute evidence to okay, I'm scared. I'm just gonna slice it. Well, with a two hander, as you said, it's a bailout shot. Yeah, yeah, it's not nearly as apparent to have that as a bailout shot because you know, you, you just don't, don't hit it as much. No. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's a, actually a con that we missed uh, mm. very quickly is uh, range, like from top to bottom. It's it's just height. I'm t- uh, speaking yeah. of contact height. Uh, two hand- the reason why the slice gets used so much more with the one hander. You were talking about uh, high contact before. Yeah. With the one hander, it's just awfully. If if your technique's not excellent yep. and or you're not pretty strong in like the shoulders and you know back and chest, you're just not hitting a. a eye height you know topspin drive very readily and so the slice just becomes kind of the default shot yep. above the shoulder whereas the two-hander it's, it's easier to put both hands up there yeah. and muscle it well Lock with a two-hander too yeah. you can even come down on it a little bit yeah if, sure. even if you're at the baseline but even i have trouble with um anything shoulder height or eye height is horrible horrible for me if i want to drive it so i want to slice it's it. tough ball yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's a living hell so that's why Nadal can just beat up on Federer in the French Open. Yeah. Just that <laughs> rally forehand cross court to Federer's backhand. Federer's going to be tired. <laughs> yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's a good pro, kind of. I, I guess I would kind of cat- categorize that under versatility. Like split, yeah. Or, yeah, just having more more options. It's, But, again, it's, I feel like it's kind of a, a two-edged sword because it's almost kind of you have it because you kind of have to have, to have it. Right. And, unless you're... A Greek god like Mark. No. <laughs> <laughs> Two things wrong with that sentence. Not a god, and I'm definitely not a Greek. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the versatility, uh, that's a big one. Uh, other pros, we talked about aesthetic, uh, versatility. Well, with the muscles that you're forced to have with a one-handed backhand from the baseline, your backhand volleys are also going nice. to improve drastically. Yeah, that's, that's a good, a good one. one. Especially that's a good with one. That outside yep. shoulder muscle and that outside yeah. arm bicep. It's kind of an automatic. It is, because yeah. you could just stick it, and yeah. it's just already there. That's a nice one. Yeah, yeah especially the high backhand volley. Yeah. Uh, well, even if you're slicing a lot on uh, from the baseline with those high backhand volleys. Getting that muscle memory. Same, yeah. same motion. It helps a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, I would even extend that to um, all around the net. Like once you get um, competent enough with the slice in general, I feel like opening the opening the hand, or actually on the backhand's cl- closing the hand, opening the racket face, and being familiar with like uh, absorption, different amounts of firmness, opening the, opening the racket face. It's something a lot of two-handed players just don't no, have. Like, no. if they don't cultivate a slice, they just don't have that touch and feel element. And so, around the net in general, they tend to be cavemen and just like club everything <laughs> instead of having some feel. I'm yeah. looking at you, Andy Roddick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, well, that's a great point too. Kind of what we were talking about. You know, the steps of you often don't see somebody with, and it doesn't have to be a great one-handed backhand, mm-hmm. right? But if they have a, a decent, they can come over to decently, uh, have a good slice, you're right. Watching them at the net is usually not that painful. Mm-hmm. But if you see <laughs> somebody w- with a two-hander that has not learned that transition, watching them on a backhand volley, they don't know what to do. They don't know, should they use two hands? Should they use uh, one? Yeah. And again, it's it's that muscle memory of, learning it's a new diversity or a new shot and and that's a great point and and you see it translate for the amateur side where as we get older you don't see as many amateurs playing singles anymore Mm -hmm. and then when you watch them get into that flow of doubles it's a little cringy yeah and again they just haven't done it and they don't know what to do with their their volley especially on that backhand side because they're not strong enough but it's awkward to have two hands at the net. Yeah. So you get stuck in that weird, um, weird transition. That comment about someone with a two-handed backhand that doesn't have like the feel or the caress from the baseline, and they look like they don't know what they're doing at the net. That is extremely apparent in like middle to lower varsity high school, both boys and girls, Mm -hmm. uh, singles actually, because they're comfortable banging from the baseline all day and good for them, you know, power American tennis, um, fortunately (laughs) and unfortunately, but you draw them into the net where they theoretically should be in power. That is a position of power for both singles and doubles most of the time. It's a deer in the headlights. And all of a sudden the frying pan comes out. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Best stroke I ever. call so I, since I have a beard, I call that the Paul Bunyan. It's like the axe; they just come nice. in and try to axe the ball. So I'm gonna throw in a, a wild card uh, pro. We touched on it very briefly earlier, and it's the word uh, status. Mm. I, I feel like that's a real. It's a real, but mm-hmm. kind of auxiliary <laughs> pro. I mean, I don't think I don't know that two. There's going to be two-handers out there that push back against that. Yeah, like, oh yeah. no, like look at the top ten. Like most of them are two-handed yep, you know, yep. players. Blah blah blah. But, but I don't know. I, I think if you're like a lifelong like tennis fan, I, I honestly like my opinion. But I don't know that you can deny that there's something about the status symbol of like having a good one hander where everybody you were describing yeah. it earlier, where everybody just kind of like pauses a little bit and appreciates the <laughs> yeah. artwork. Yeah, work. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. I, yeah I when was it's just, done well. well. Right. Well, I was gonna say I've when I was coaching kids, like I never had a kid come in and say. I want to have a two-hander like Agassi, like mm-hmm. Djokovic, right? But I got some crazy kids that could barely <laughs> hold a racket being like, I want a one-hander like Federer. I'm like, I want a lot of stuff too, but it ain't happening, my man. But it, you're, you're exactly right. And, and take it from the pro level to the club level, like you were saying, if you are a 3035 player and you see a really well hit one-handed backhand you're automatically putting that person and mm-hmm. the top of the, like the club ranking and they might not be if you see a great two-hander you're like oh that's that yeah, pretty that's good that's what you're supposed to do yeah that's yeah. what you, it's move like on. it's like if you're a car guy and you, and you yeah. see the ferrari you know, <laughs> go down the street it's like everybody's gonna pause a little bit and yeah. like and, and take and, a look and look right it, Everybody kind of knows it's like, ooh, okay, all right. So one and just to be Ferrari. clear, I'm not putting myself like in that in the <laughs> Ferrari category, but that's what I aspire. You know, I I think there's a certain uh, status and aesthetic to it that, like you're saying, like yeah. the, the kids, like they, they know. You know, they know. You, you see it and you know. It's yeah. like it's everybody like, wishes sweet. they could do that. Yeah. Back to your comment about the two-handed uh, backhand people, those uh, fanboys for the two-handed backhand about the top ten. What I would actually argue is that's an argument for the one-handed status being higher. Oh, snap. Because mm. you look at all you're time. that minority. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, one out of the 10 in the top 10 for ATP have a one-handed backhand. Better pay attention to it. Right. 
<laughs> he's doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. And also, if you look back through the like the ages yep. of tennis, and you look at the one hander versus two hander, like elite, you know, players, yeah. a big percentage of them have been uh, one much bigger like percentage yep. than current like top hundred, you know, one one handed players. Isn't that amazing that um, was it the McEnroe era was um, the one handed? Then Bjorn Borg came into the you, scene. Mm. Everybody had a two handed, and now it's going back to the one hander. And then it's it's always a it, shift in it, dynamic. Yeah, I think that's always going to be like every sports league. It's the copycat league yeah. when you you see somebody that does it really well, and you watch somebody how their possibly how their mechanics are or personal bias, right? Yep. Like, hey, I mean, what was it? Sampras's coach was adamant. I think he was going to have a one handed backhand. Oh, yeah, Sampras did have a two handed. Yeah, back and, in the day. and his coach like, you're only going to. I I could be wrong on this, so we'd have to fact check. But I I thought I read somewhere his coach was yeah. you're going to be a and he was terrible for a while. Yep. Uh, because he couldn't oh, figure it out. Dominic Team, he yeah. had a two-hander growing up. Really? And then his coach says, you're going to hit a one-handed backhand. Yeah. And he That's brave. Yeah. sucked for like a year, year yeah, and a half you know on what the junior age? tour. Um, I believe, and I can look it up later, 14 or 15. Like mm -hmm. it's around the same age Sampras did. Yeah, and really. he didn't win a single match for like a year, year and a half in his circuit. And and that's and now, crazy because at that level, right, because they're breaking in, yeah. you, you know, they're professional and, you know, it's not... Like hey, I, if I for me, I want to. Uh, I'm just gonna switch to a one hander. Yeah. There's really no consequences. Uh, but but yeah, that's pretty crazy. Your career is over. My career's over. Right? I, I peaked in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, one last one last pro we didn't talk about is the range of having a one handed backhand, especially yeah, on the that's run. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Because you only have one arm on the racket, you can extend maybe mm -hmm. what eight inches or so to hit that drive or maybe even that slice yeah. that you're more comfortable with with a one hander. Both defensive and offensive. With a two-hander, I mean, how comfortable are you hitting a two-hander yeah. with both your elbows Full out? Full extension. Yeah. Yeah, you, that ball has to be hit yeah. well and hard so you can just basically, like, block it back. If there's no pace, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't do anything with the ball. Well, your arms just don't go well, anywhere. Well, Nadal's naturally a righty, too, and you know, yeah. he's a freak of a specimen when it comes to physicality, so yeah. he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. yeah. But that's just an awkward-feeling shot, both elbows out. But with a one-hander, you do want your elbow to be almost, almost straight. And, and they just come over, yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, I feel like we've covered it pretty well. Yeah, Any yeah. other auxiliary thoughts, pros, cons? I, you know, I I, I think opinions. we we started off like going off the top turnbuckle and throwing down the elbow <laughs> on the cons, where everybody was going to switch their one to a two. But I think we we brought the positivity back to almost like an even it's split of balanced, where we are. Yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty balanced. And that's what makes the it's a great topic because a there's a lot of subjectivity to it. Yeah. And there's a lot of just kind of personal, you know, personal opinion. But B, it actually, yeah, it's an interesting balance. And if it wasn't, like, if there wasn't a compelling, uh, e relatively even balance, we wouldn't continue to see the rotation back and forth between 1E and 2E yep. uh, over the years. So it's an interesting kind of like good side of the force, bad side of the force kind of uh, battle. Yeah, I think I think just kind of like, last quick thought I had is if as a coach, right, you, if you're hell bent on one or the other, you're wrong. I totally agree. You know, you uh, have to go percent. to the, the, the student of yeah. what they're doing. So 100%. if you're having a coach that's like, you need to have a one handed backhand that that's terrible personal bias because that's all based on the student right there. So, um, that's where a good versatile coach will say, okay, we're going to take what you think is going to be best for you yeah. and, and groove that shot. Well, this kind of feeds into possibly our next topic, but you know, as a coach, especially in a private lesson type of setting, you need to be able to teach both. Yeah. Like for me, obviously I have a one hand, yeah. yeah. but I know how to teach a two hand right. backhand. And for the most part, this kind of came in from the beginning of um, th this episode. But for me, it's all about the left hand. It's almost like a left handed forehand. Mm -hmm. And then the right hand is just there along the ride. And that solves most of the problems when it comes to the basic fundamentals of hitting a good two-handed backhand at the varsity high school level yep. for both boys and girls. All right. I think that's the cherry on top there. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. Appreciate your support, Matt and Mark. Thank nice you Nice job. Much. This is your first, you. uh, first official. First official. Shankcast episode. Awesome. Well done. Hopefully I get a shaving deal out of this. Uh, what's that? Dollar Shave Club? <laughs> Dollar Shave, shave Club. club. <laughs> Dollar No Shave Club. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll Thank catch you. you in the next episode.